good morning to all of you today i am here to explain piece of crop production in the first topic is development of agriculture in our india first india's total geographical area is about 329 million hectares and the, at the time of the independence the total cultivated area is about 98.5 million hectares and the total irrigated area is about 19.5 million hectares and now the cultivated area is increased to 143 million hectares and the irrigated area is increased to 82.6 million hectares according to the 2005 to 2006 agriculture data so this is the one evidence that agriculture is developed and then about 43 percent of indian geographical area out of 329 million hectares is used for only agriculture activities and then 70 percent people are who living in rural areas are still dependent on agriculture only so that's why agriculture is backbone of our indian economy first agriculture what is agriculture the word agriculture is derived from the two latin words that is agar or agri meaning soil and the cultura meaning cultivation so agriculture is nothing but soil cultivation but this agriculture may be defined as art science and the business of producing the crops and the livestock for the man's use and the development next the agriculture is not it is simple term but it has the aspects like crop production fisheries dairy poultry livestock farming or sericulture so agriculture inc include this all aspects Next, father of agronomy is Peter Dickerson's. Next word is agronomy. This agronomy word is derived from Greek word agoros meaning the field and the nomos meaning to manage. Agriculture is from Latin word and agronomy is from Greek word. Agriculture is soil cultivation and agronomy means field management. So literally agronomy means the art of managing the field. This agronomy is, deals with the principles of and practices of soil water and the crop management and also this agronomy deals with the methods which provide the favorable environment to the crop for the higher productivity this agronomy is a one of the branch of agriculture science Agro agriculture has so many brain branches like soil science agronomy entomology pathology so agronomy is one of the branch and that deals with the principles and practices of soil water and crop management Next is crop production. Crop production is nothing but producing the crops. Agriculture is the soil cultivation and the agronomy is art of managing the field and crop production means producing the various crops like food crops, fodder crops or fiber crops. And next another term is farming. Farming means raising crops or raising livestock, fisheries. It's like that. So don't confuse between these four. Farming crop production, agronomy and then another is agriculture. Next is green revolution. First the term green revolution is coined by William Gutt and India has witnessed the green revolution between 1960 to 1970 through the wheat crop. Green revolution is nothing but increase in the food grain production and the father of green revolution worldwide is Norman E. Borlam and in our India, M.S. Swaminathan. So the term coined by William Gard and the Green Revolution father in world is Normani Borla and in our India, it is M.S. Swaminathan and the gene that is responsible for the Green Revolution is Norin 10. So India witnessed Green Revolution through crop is wheat and then gene is Norin 10 and the term coined by William Gard and the father of Green Revolution in world is Normani Borla and in India is M.S. Swaminathan. Next, some other revolutions are white revolution by milk, blue revolution by aquaculture and the yellow revolution by oil seeds and round revolution by potato, green revolution by food grain production, rainbow revolution by overall production in agriculture and then silver revolution by egg or poultry production and then pink revolution by tomato or meat. Next, these are some factors that are responsible for development of agriculture. First is yielding varieties or hybrids. 
now we have so many high yielding varieties in so many crops and we have some genetically modified plants also like bt cotton next non traditional or introduced crops in olden days we grow only rice and then wheat also in northern parts of india but now soya bean sunflower and then oil palm these are some crops that introduced from other countries and now these crops occupied the most of the area in our india next mechanization in olden days most of the farm operations are done by cattle only but now these cattle are replaced by tractors and some uh, harvesters paddy harvester and potato harvester groundnut uh, transplanter these all are comes into existence and the main problem in this mechanization mechanization in our india is the farm size our average farm size in our india is 1.57 hectares only this is the mainly problem and then watershed programs some moisture conservation practice practices are this watershed programs and these watershed programs are conducted by anna hazare and rajendra singh these two people are conducted this watershed programs and then agricultural extension programs for example dad centers in our state in each district we have dad centers district agricultural advisory and transfer of technology these centers are educating the farmers through conducting meetings or demonstrations in the field so the, these centers educate the farmers about the new technologies that comes in agriculture and tv programs like raitu mitra this tv programs are also educating the farmers about the agriculture next some of the international and national agriculture research institutes that located in our state first is icrisat international crop research institute for semi arid tropics this are this only international institute that located in our state hyderabad next crida crops research institute for dry land agriculture this central institute and then drr directorate of rice research this is national research institute next dwr directorate of oil seeds research and now national academy of agriculture research management this also national research institute next ctri central tobacco research institute this is located at rajamandri ap this is central research institute and the ira indian agriculture research institute new delhi next agro climatic zones of combined ap before separation of telangana from ap combined ap is divided into nine agro climatic zones based on the factors like rainfall geographical area and the crops grown under that zone and the required temperatures for crop growth the nine zones are krishna zone godavari zone north coastal zone southern zone northern telangana zone central telangana zone and then southern telangana zone scarce rainfall zone and high altitude and tribal zone in this topic you need to remember which districts comes under which zone and the how much rainfall under that zone and the irrigation facilities problems and the rirs center located at that zone first krishna zone under krishna zone the districts comes under this zone is krishna guntur and then prakasham and the rainfall under this zone is 1020 1220 and the irrigation facilities are by krishna river and the problem faced under this zone are drainage problem and water logging problem irrigation is um, rainfall is high that's why drainage is the major problem in this zone and the rirs regional agricultural research station rirs that is located at lam guntur next is godavari zone under this zone the districts are east and west godavari and the rainfall is 830 to 1120 mm irrigation facilities by godavari river in krishna zone irrigation facility by krishna in uh, godavari zone it is godavari next problems are same drainage and water logging problem and the rirs is maruteru west godavari next north coastal zone under this zone the districts are 
ஸ்ரீகாகுளம் விஜயநகரம் அண்ட் தென் விசாகப்பட்டினம் ரெயின்ஃபால் அண்ட் திஸ் ஜோன் இஸ் டென் டுவெண்ட்டி டு டுவெல் டுவெண்ட்டி எம்எம் அண்ட் இரிகேஷன் ஃபெசிலிட்டிஸ் பை நாகவெல்லி வம்சதாராயன் சாரதா ரிவர் ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் ஆர் இம்ப்ராப்பர் வாட்டர் ஃபெசிலிட்டிஸ் ஆர்ஐஆர் இஸ் லொக்கேட்டட் அட் அன்காப்பள்ளி விசாகப்பட்டினம் நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் சதரின் ஜோன் அண்டர் திஸ் ஜோன் த டிஸ்ட்ரிக்ட் சார் சித்தூரு நெல்லூரு அண்ட் கடப்பா திஸ் த்ரீ டிஸ்ட்ரிக்ட் கம்ஸ் அண்டர் திஸ் ஜோன் அண்ட் த ரெயின்ஃபால் இஸ் சிக்ஸ் ஃபிஃப்டி டூ லெவன் ஃபிஃப்டி எம்எம் அண்ட் இரிகேஷன் ஃபெசிலிட்டிஸ் பை பென்னா ரிவர் அண்ட் த ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் ஆர் சாயில் எரோஷன் அண்ட் த இம்ப்ராப்பர் வாட்டர் ஃபெசிலிட்டிஸ் ஆர்ஐஆர்எஸ் இஸ் லொக்கேட்டட் எஸ் திருப்பதி சித்தூர் நெக்ஸ்ட் இஸ் நார்த் அண்ட் தெலங்கானா ஜோன் அண்டர் திஸ் ஜோன் த டிஸ்ட்ரிக்ட் சார் கரீம்நகர் அதிலாபாத் and then nijamabad and the irrigation is 950 to 1160 mm irrigation facilities by shriram sagar project or kadam project and the problems faced are late onset of monsoon this is the main problem and the rrs is located at jagityal karimnagar next is central telangana zone under this zone the districts are varangal kammam and then medak this three districts comes under this zone and the rainfall is about 900 to 1160 mm irrigation facilities same as northern telangana zone sri ramsagar project or kadam project and the problems are same late onset of monsoon and the rrs is located at varangal next is southern telangana zone under this zone the districts are mahbubnagar nalgonda and then rangareddy this three districts comes under this zone and the rainfall is about 700 to 900 mm and the irrigation facilities by nagarjuna sagar project and the problems are zinc nitrogen and phosphorus deficiency rrs is located at palim mahbubnagar next is k rainfall zone under the zone districts are karnool and then anantapur under this zone rainfall is very less 500 to 700 mm and the irrigation facilities by tungabhadra canal in this uh, zone the main problem is soil have the less water holding capacity and the rrs is located at nandyala karnool last zone is high altitude and tribal zone under this zone some part of the districts like shrikakulam visakhapatnam ஈஸ்ட் கோதாவரி நெக்ஸ்ட் கம்மம் அண்ட் தென் அதிலாபாத் ஸோ சம் ஆஃப் தி பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஆல் டிஸ்ட்ரிக்ட்ஸ் கம்ஸ் அண்டர் திஸ் ஹை ஆல்டிட்யூட் அண்ட் ட்ரைபல் ஜோன் அண்டர் திஸ் ஜோன் ரெயின்ஃபால் இஸ் வெரி ஹை லெவன் நைன்டி ஃபைவ் எம்எம் இரிகேஷன் இஸ் மோஸ்ட்லி பை ரெயின்ஃபால் ஓன்லி அண்ட் த ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் ஃபேஸ்ட் பை போடு கல்டிவேஷன் போடு கல்டிவேஷன் இஸ் நத்திங் பட் ஷிஃப்டிங் கல்டிவேஷன் திஸ் இஸ் த மேஜர் ப்ராப்ளம் அண்டர் திஸ் ஜோன் அண்ட் த ஆர்ஆர்எஸ் இஸ் லொக்கேட்டட் அட் சிந்தப்பள்ளி விசாகப்பட்டினம் Next, some of the important bits. Rice bowl of Andhra Pradesh is Krishna or Godavari zone. And the more number of forest products that obtain from high altitude and the tribal zone. And the average farm size of India is 1.57 hectares. And the based on geographical area, Andhra Pradesh is in 5th place. Next, monsoon. First, what is monsoon? Monsoon is the seasonal changes in atmospheric circulation and the precipitation associated with the asymmetric heating of land and sea mainly um, in india we get rainfall mainly through two monsoons first is southwest monsoon and then northeast monsoon the term monsoon is derived from the arabic word mausum which means season first is southwest monsoon first of all this monsoon is active from the june to september how this monsoon is occur in summer over the land area um, the surface is heats quickly and here low pressure is produced and then over the seas pressure is high so here is between the land and sea pressure gradient is improved so that's why wind flow from the high pressure to the low pressure area and this 
uh, wind is most air most when the air raises it cools and this causes the precipitation over the land this is why the summer monsoons cause the much of the rainfall in this monsoon and 80 to 90 percent of this ra annual rainfall is recovered by the this monsoon only and this monsoon first enters the kerala on june and by 15th july it reaches the most of the parts of the country and this monsoon have two branches the arabian sea branch and bay of bengal branch the arabian sea branch crosses the western ghats and the bay of bengal branch is it crosses the gangetic plains next is northeast monsoon another point this uh, southwest monsoon also known as grand period of rainfall Next monsoon is northeast monsoon. Northeast monsoon is complete reverse reverse of this southwest monsoon. This uh, winds takes place in winter season, and this monsoon is active from the October to mid December. And this monsoon also known as retreating monsoon. Ten to twenty percent of the rainfall received from this monsoon, and this monsoon is mostly cover the Andhra Pradesh, in that particularly Nellore and Chittu districts, and in Tamil Nadu. Next is cropping season in India. Mainly India have three um, cropping seasons. Karif, Rabi and then summer. First Karif. In these crops are grown at the beginning of monsoon and they harvested at the um, uh, last of the monsoon. And this in se this season crops require the warm wet weather for the growth and the short day length for the flowering. And the sowing times are June 15 to July 15. Sowing time and then in September we go for harvesting and the main crops grow under this zone is jowar, uh, like millets, rice, next is some of the um, uh, fiber crops like cotton and jew. These crops grown under this karif season and then rabi. In these crops need relatively cool climate during the growth period and the long day length for the flowering. In Karif, they require short day length for flowering. In Rabi, they require long day length for flowering. Also known as this winter season. Rabi season also known as winter season. And the sowing time is October to December. Harvesting is Feb to April. And crops grown under this zone is wheat. This season is wheat, barley, gram, and mustard. Next is summer season. In this in this season, the crops require the warm, dry weather for the growth period and the long, longer day length for the flowering. In Karif, short day length, rabi, and summer, it requires long day length for flowering. And the sowing time is March to June. And the majorly growing crops are groundnut, watermelon, pumpkins, and gourds. Next is classification of crops. Crops are classified based on purpose. First is grain crop. Grain crops are uh, for food purpose, staple food. Cereals and then millets comes under in these grain crops. Next is pulse or legume crops. These are mainly grown for dal purpose and these legume crops are rich in protein. Example for this legume crop is green gram, black gram or Red gram. Then next, then oil seeds. Oil seeds are rich in fatty acids, and this grown for mainly oil purpose. Um, oil seeds example is sesame, groundnut, mustard, linseed. This all comes under oil seed crops. Next is forage crops. Forage crops are grown for grass purpose for livestock, and then fiber crops. Fiber crops are for jute purpose. For example, jute, cotton, linseed. This all are comes for fiber crops. Next is root crops. In root crops, the economical part is the economical part is roots. For example, carrot, sweet potato, turnip. 
in this the economical part is root so that's why this crops are root crops and next then tuber crops in this tuber crop the economical part is not the root the um, underground stem is the economical part for example potato and elephant yam this these are tuber crops and then sugar crops this sugar crops are grown for sugar purpose in our india we grow we grow only two crops for sugar purpose that is sugar beet and then sugar cane these two crops are grown, grown for sugar purpose and then starch crops this starch crops are grown for only uh, flour purpose for example potato and then next is spices and condiments these spices are the these are these products are, um when we apply when we add to the freezer fruit they add taste flavor and sometimes color to the freezer fruit for example of this spices and condiments are ginger garlic chili cumin coriander this all comes under this spices and condiments next is drug crop this crops used for some preparation of medicines for example tobacco and mint are the drug crops next vegetable crops vegetable crops are like um, solid vegetables or leafy vegetables next green manual crops green manual crops are for green manual to improve the soil fertility and then next medicinal are aromatic plants under this plants we have isab gal opium poppy lemon grass citronella grass this all comes under medicinal and aromatic plants next classification based on duration of the crops first is seasonal crops seasonal crop require only one season for their growing for example rice wheat they require only one season for um, or either curry for rabi for their growing next is two seasonal crops they require two seasons for their growing for example cotton turmeric and ginger the crops are two seasonal crops next is annual crops they require one year for their growing example is sugar cane then biennial crops they require two years for their growing one year for their vegetative growth and then then second year is for their flowering or fruiting for example is banana and papaya they require two years for their growing next is perennial crops they require more than two years for their growing uh, all fruit crops are come come under this classification and next is classification based on water requirement rain fed rain fed means crops grow under rainfall only for example jowar bajra uh, all millets are comes under this rain fed next uh, irrigated crops they require irrigation for the growing for example ch rice chilli sugar cane they require irrigation for the growing next is classification based on root system first is tap root system in this the mother root is deep for example grapes or cotton in the in this crops the root system is tap root system and this adventitious of fibrous root system in this roots are fibrous shallow and the spreading type roots are for example rice wheat this uh, this all crops are have adventitious root, root system next based on economic importance cash crops this crops are grown for only profit means um, cash purpose only next is food crops this food crops grown for food purpose next based on number of cotyledons monocotyledons and dicotyledons cotyledons monocotyledons are only one cotyledon example are cereal all cereals and millets have only one cotyledon and dicotyledons example is pulses next is 
tillage. First, tillage is mechanical manipulation of the soil with the tools and implements to result in good till for better germination and the growth of the crop. First, this tilt is the physical condition of the soil resulting from tillage operation. The word tillage is derived from anglo saxon language and the father of tillage is Jetrakul. Next, effect of tillage on some soil physical properties. First, soil structure. Soil structure is the arrangement of soil particles. When we done this uh, tillage operation in optimum condition, tillage improves the soil structure. When we done this tillage operation in dry condition, it is hard to um, increase the soil structure. And then it done in two wet conditions, it uh, spoils the soil structure. So uh, tillage operations are done in optimum soil mature level. Next is soil texture. Soil, soil um, texture is not affected by the tillage operations and then next is pore space tillage improves the pore space when the soil is in good tilt the capillary and then non capillary these two pores are equal in equal when it is equal the tillage is good next particle density particle density also not altered by the tillage operations so these two are important soil tex texture and the particle density is not altered by the tillage operations. Next is bulk density. Bulk density is weight for unit volume. When we till the soil, bulk density decreases. Untilled soil have more bulk density than tilled soil and the particle density is always greater than the bulk density. Next is soil color. Organic matter is the re mainly responsible for the soil color. When the, this tillage operation is done, this tillage improves the oxida oxidation of the organic matter and that leads to the fading of the soil color. Next is types of tillage. First is preparative cultivation. Preparative cultivation is done before sowing of the crop. After cultivation is practiced and after sowing of the crop. In preparatory cultivation, we have three components. Primary tillage, secondary tillage and seedbed preparation. Primary tillage is in this operation. We have done ploughing operations by moldboard plough, disc plough. And then in secondary tillage operation, we have we done the harrowing operations. And next, third is seedbed preparation. This seedbed preparation is done by country plough. Next is after cultivation. After cultivation is a practice after the sowing of the crop. In that we have intercultivation and many other special operations. Intercultivation is the tillage operations done between the crop rows to delete the weeds or earthing of the soil. To remove seeds and earthing of the soil, this intercultivation is done in the between the crop rows. Next is thinning and gap filling. Next, adding up this operation is done in sugarcane and banana. Next, to desuckering. Removal of daughter suckers from, um, I said from the mother plant is desuckering. This done in banana. Next, to wrapping and propping. To reduce the lodging in sugarcane, we tie the bottom leaves of sugarcane. This op that operation is called wrapping and propping. This done in sugarcane. And then nipping this operation done in castor and defoliation in cotton, topping, trimming and desuckering in tobacco and then ha hand pollination is done in sunflower. Next is puddling. Puddling is the puddling the plumbing the land with standing water has to create the impervious layer before surface to reduce the deep percolation losses. Next up, methods of sowing. We have mainly two methods direct seeding or transplanting. In direct seeding Direct to sow the seeds in the main field, but in transplanting, first we uh, grow the seedlings in the nursery and then it um, shifted to the main field. In direct seeding, we have two types broadcasting and line sowing. Um, first, broadcasting. Broadcasting is nothing but broadcasting the seeds by hand all over the field it, uh, and covered by, covered by the wooden plant. It's it mo mostly done in the paddy and wheat shoot and sesame. Next is Line sowing. In line sowing, we have two types drilling and dibbling. In drilling, dropping the seeds with the help of implements in drilling. 
but in dibbling we place the seeds in the field at the uh, cross markers placed by the with the help of markers next is transplanting in transplanting first we do we sow the seeds in nursery after the uh, we allow the seedlings to grow then we shifted to the, the seedlings to the main field this is transplanting next is depth of sowing mainly the depth of sowing is depends on seed size this is important for beets approximately 3 to 4 times of their diameter for very small seed the depth is 1 cm for small seed like sesame and finger millet it is 3 to 5 cm for bold seeds like castor groundnut and cotton maize it is 6 to 7 cm and the optimum depth of sowing for most of the field crops is 3 to 5 cm the seed size and the optimum depth is important for your beets next is seed rate for some important crops for maize it is 20 kg per hectare for bajra it is 4 kg and then sorghum is 8 kg groundnut is 100 to 120 kg per hectare and then sunflower for 5 kg per hectare and then tobacco it is 30 grams and then mustard 2 to 3 kg soybean is 80 to 100 kg so in this you need um, sorghum groundnut tobacco and soybean are important for your beets next soil fertility first of all Soil fertility is nothing but the inherent capacity of the soil to supply plant nutrients in adequate quantities in suitable proportions is termed as soil fertility. Soil productivity is the capacity of soil to produce crops. Soil fertility is the index of soil nutrients. So soil productivity is the index of crop yield. The soil fertility is analyzed in the lab, but in the soil productivity is analyzed in the farm only. Next is denitrification. Denitrification is the during the denitrification, the nitrates are reduced to nitrates and then to nitrogen gas and then to ammonia. First, NO3 minus to NO2 minus and then to nitrous oxide into and then finally into gas first nitrate nitrate to nitrite and then nitrous oxide to nitric acid to nitrous oxide and then reduce to nitrogen gas this is the denitrification process and the most important denitrifying bacteria are thiobacillus, micrococcus, pseudomonas and bacillus. Next, mineral nutrition. Mineral nutrition is, it is the process of absorption of and utilization of this essential element for plant growth and reproduction. And the functional element term is coined by the Nicholas. Essentiality of nutrients. Explained by Arnon and Stout. And the, these mm, essential elements are classified into macronutrients and then micronutrients. Under this macronutrients, these macronutrients are required by the plants mm, more. In this, we have two types, primary nutrients and secondary nutrients. Primary nutrients are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Secondary nutrients are calcium, magnesium and sulfur. Next to micronutrients, also known as trace elements. In the micronutrients, we have two types, cationic and anionic. Under cationic, ferrous, manganese, copper and zinc comes under cationic. And anionic are molybdenum, chlorine and boron. Next to beneficial elements, silicon, vanadium, cobalt and aluminum are beneficial elements. Next is uh, based on mobility, these uh, essential elements are classified into highly mobile, moderately mobile, less mobile and immobile. Mobility means when the leaves are old, they become yellow color. In mobile nutrients, these mobile nutrients are 
uh, transfer to the older leaves to the new leaves mobile nutrients immobile nutrients are they remain in old leaves only so there is a deficiency so based on mobility highly mobile nutrients are nitrogen phosphorus and potassium moderately mobile nutrients are zinc and the less mobile nutrients are sulfur ferrous manganese copper molybdenum and chlorine and immobile nutrients are calcium and boron this important for your bits high highly mobile nutrients and immobile nutrients next is some deficiency symptoms of nitrogen when there is a deficiency in plants they show the symptoms like chlorosis and stunted growth when there is a deficiency of phosphorus they show the symptoms like restricted root growth and production of dark green leaves and reddish purple tip of leaf margins in potassium they show the reduced crop yields without appearance of deficiency symptoms this phenomenon is known as hidden hunger these are the some deficient symptoms of nitrogen phosphorus and then potassium thank you